What's up traders and welcome to this first ever installment of the Market Barometrics tutorial series. I'm your host Neil Lyons and today we're going to be taking a quick tour of the Market Barometer software. What is it? What does it do? And how is it going to help you become a better investor? So first of all, the, the Market Barometer is something of a storytelling tool. It helps guide investors through a a top-down approach, um, a top-down analysis of the economy and of the various sectors, industries, and individual companies within the financial markets. So you'll find that the software is, is divided into three main sections. You have a technical analysis section, a fundamental analysis section, and an economic analysis section. The technical analysis section is going to give you basic price charting tools um, as well as the kind of popular technical indicators that we like to look at. It's also going to give you tools related to comparing and contrasting the price history and price action of various uh, individual companies, ETFs, and indices. So moving on, the, the next section of the, of, of the software is the fundamental analysis section. Now this is going to help you take a deep dive look into the current financial situation of any given company. It's going to allow you to gauge the financial situation of a company relative to itself historically and relative to its industry and sector peers as well as the market as a whole. And this is going to give you a really good idea of how a company is performing relative to itself and relative to the market. Lastly, we have the economic analysis section of the software. This is going to give you, um, it's going to help guide you through some of the most important trends and themes developing within, uh, within the economy and the market as a whole. It's going to help you identify those macroeconomic trends that are really moving the market. And it's going to help you identify which sectors, industries, and individual companies might be the most attractive might be the best places to focus your efforts. So without further ado, let's dive into the software. All right, so here we are in the technical analysis section of the Market Barometer software. Um, quickly, I want to mention that each major section of the software is comprised of several subsections. And you can navigate to each of the various subsections using the tabs in the bottom left hand corner, much like you would navigate around an Excel spreadsheet. So the first tab of the technical analysis section is the technical chart tab. This tab is going to be where you're going to do most of your price charting. Uh, so you get selection for um, which company you want to look at by ticker. You get the company's name. You also get the most recent close price, the most recent day percent change. And you're also are going to get the industry and sector that the company is within. So right now we're looking at applied materials, which is in the semiconductors industry, which is in the technology sector. So below that, you have a date range slider. Change the date range there. Below that is the main price chart. So the bluish, greenish, thicker line there is going to be the daily close price. And the three accompanying lines are the exponential moving averages. So you need your 9, 50, and 200 day exponential moving averages. Below that, we have our technical indicators. First one on top here is the moving average convergence divergence, or the MACD. Below that is the relative strength index, or the RSI. And below that is the volume. So look to future tutorials to learn more about what each of these technical indicators does and how it can help you to forecast future price movements. So moving on to the next tab, we have the price comparison tab. Uh, basically, we just have two price charts stacked on top of each other. This is going to help us monitor the relationships between various asset classes and individual assets. Lastly, we have the forecast tab. Um, again, look to future tutorials to learn more about what's going on in this tab. But basically what we have is a historical price chart. And you're going to get a forecast of where price is likely to be over the next 12 months. So, you know, this is, this is today. And moving forward, this bubble is showing you the outer bounds of the range that price is likely to be at with a 90% confidence level. So that wraps up the technical analysis section. Let's move on to the fundamental analysis section. 
So navigating down brings us to the fundamental analysis section. This section is it's chock full of a ton of really cool insights and features that are going to help you gauge the current financial situation of individual companies, the industries and sectors that they reside within. So before we dive in to each subsection of the fundamental analysis section, I want to talk a little bit about how we have all this organized and laid out. So generally, we have this categorized into kind of four main sections of fundamental analysis, categories of financial ratios related to various aspects of a company's current financial situation. Those categories being valuation, solvency, profitability, and growth. Within each of those categories, you're going to find several financial ratios that are going to help you answer questions like, how expensive is this company? How capable is it of meeting its short-term and long-term debt obligations? Or how solvent is it? Um, how effectively is management turning revenues into profits through profitability financial ratios? And you know, basic questions like, is this company growing? How are their profit margins? So let's dive into the software and take a look how we have this all laid out. So the first tab in this section is the summary tab. This is meant to give you a, a quick kind of one-off glance at the current financial situation of the company, looking at kind of our favorite metric or two related to each of the four categories of fundamental analysis. So we have this page color-coded in these columns here with valuation on the left in green, profitability next to that in red, solvency next to that in blue, and growth in gray. So we're going to take a look at this valuation column over here towards the left as an example. At the top we have these gauges and within these gauges you get quite a bit of information. So for the valuation the gauge here is specifically looking at the EV over EBITDA financial ratio. Look to future tutorials to learn more about what that's telling us but in essence, it's going to give us a good idea of how expensive this company is. Specifically, this gauge is going to help us determine how expensive is this company relative to itself historically. So 12.10, that's the most current reading. Um, above that, 11.96, that's going to be the average of all EV EBITDA readings for, in this case, applied materials. 17.13 um, to the right over here, that's the maximum reading, and 5.53 is the minimum reading. So you can tell that right now with an EV over EBITDA of 12.10, applied materials is trading pretty much in line with its historical average as far as how expensive it is. Below that, you get a quick, uh, a quick glance at the trend in EV over EBITDA, which can be helpful to determine you know, how, how expensive it is relative to itself historically and how that is trended recently. Below that, you get um, another financial ratio related to valuation. This is the price earnings, and this is the trend in the price earnings over the last several years. So you'll find that the other columns are laid out in exactly the same way, the only difference being the um, financial ratios that we're looking at specifically. So the profitability column is going to have financial ratios related to profitability. How effective is management at turning revenues into profits? So um, again, you have the gauge. This one's looking at return on assets. Below is the return on assets trend. And below that is the return on equity trend. Solvency next door to that looks at the current ratio up top, looks at the trend in its debt to assets, and below that is the trend in its total debt accumulation. Next to that you have growth in gray over here, looking at earnings per share up top, earnings per share trend below that, and shares outstanding below that. So again, this tab is meant to be kind of a, a quick look at recent performance of a given company. Moving over to the right, we have the valuation trend tab. So you're going to find that the next several tabs are all laid out in the exact same way. And each of these tabs is designed to give you a deeper dive look into one of the four categories of fundamental analysis. Again, those four categories being valuation, solvency, profitability, and growth. So right now we're on the valuation trend tab. 
This tab is designed to give you a close look at the valuation of your company selection. It's going to give you access to the various financial ratios associated with valuation. And you're going to be able to select between those financial ratios in this bank of buttons over here to the left. So I've just selected the EV over EBITDA financial ratio. You can see that it updated all these charts and figures over to the right. So what are these charts? Well, these charts are the EV EBITDA trending through time um, under various contexts. So this topmost chart, the yellow chart, is going to be the EV over EBITDA for applied materials itself trending through time. Below that, you're going to get the EV, the median EV EBITDA of the entire industry that Applied Materials is within. So Applied Materials is in the semiconductors industry. So right now we're looking at the EV over EBITDA trending through time for the semiconductors industry. Below that is for the entire technology sector, median EV EBITDA for the technology sector. Below that is median EV EBITDA for the market as a whole. The figures to the left of the chart, those are year-to-date averages. So the year-to-date 2020 average EV EBITDA for applied materials is 13.9. So one more thing to mention on the uh, fundamental analysis section is that on each of the uh, trend tabs, if you want a quick reminder on what, what each of the financial ratios means, just hover above the company name right here. Sometimes you have to click and uh, it'll give you a quick reminder definition of what each of these financial ratios does, uh, how it's calculated, and what it's going to tell you. So moving on to the next tabs, again, these are set up in the exact same way, only looking at a different category of fundamental analysis. So now we're looking at the solvency trend tab. These are solvency related financial ratios, going to give you an idea of this company's ability to meet its short and long term debt obligations, um, as well as things like total accumu accumulated debt. Uh, the next tab is the profitability trend. You're going to get profitabil profitability related financial ratios. Then you're going to get the growth trend to look at things like revenue growth, income growth, free cash flow growth, uh, trending through time. So lastly, we have this compare competitors tab. This one is a little different, but utilizes a lot of the same information in a different way. So this table is going to give you the ability to um, narrow down your selection of stocks and then to sort those stocks based on different financial ratios. For example, right now we are looking at all companies in the technology sector utilizing this um, technology or this sector drop down here. So if I select basic materials, it's going to update this table with all companies in the basic materials sector. I can drill this down even further and narrow it down even further by selecting individual industries within the basic materials sector. So if I wanted to look at all chemicals companies in the basic materials sector, now I have both of these filters filtering down this table to only chemicals company companies in the basic materials sector. Beyond that, I have every one of the financial ratios from the previous tabs in this table. You can utilize this scroll bar at the bottom of the table to see all the different financial ratios. And then what it allows us to do is to sort this series of companies, this group of companies by any of these financial ratios. So if we want to find out what the most expensive chemicals company is, we can filter the table first by the basic material sectors and sector and chemicals industry, and then we can sort by any of the valuation related financial ratios. So EV over EBITDA being one of my favorite valuation ratios. If I click on the column header here, it's going to sort it high to low. So now we've found that Trinzio SA is the most expensive chemicals company relative to its EV over EBITDA. So you can do this with any one of these financial ratios, and there's a ton of insights that you can gain by playing with this table. So I encourage you to give this a spin, uh, familiarize yourself with how to filter and sort on this table to help you kind of uncover potentially um, good investment opportunities. So that brings us to the close of the fundamental analysis section. Let's jump down to the economic analysis section. So navigating down brings us to the economic analysis portion of the software. 
This section is designed to help you get a really good understanding of the macroeconomic trends at play and you know the changing themes as they develop. Um, the things that are moving the market to help you get an idea of the current state of the market environment and the likely future course. So it's broken down into several different tabs, each of which is dedicated to a different area of economic analysis. So I'm not going to dive too deep into each tab for now. Uh, just know that you can look to future tutorial videos to learn more about you know, the individual components of this section of the software. But I do want to make note that on any of these charts, if you hover over them, uh, you're not only going to get the information related to the specific data point that you're hovering over, like the date and the reading, uh, but it's also going to give you a quick reminder of what this metric is and what it's telling you. So, for example, if we hover over GDP here, we can see on October 1st, 2019, GDP reading was 21.75 thousand. That's in billions. So, actually, that's 21.75 trillion. Um, and you also get a quick description of what GDP is and what it's telling you. Um, so, something to keep in mind as you navigate through this section is that there's a bunch of friendly reminders as to what this stuff is and how to put it together. The next tab has to do with inner market analysis. Again, look to future tutorials to learn more about what this tab is telling you. We have sector rotation. And again, just like all the other tabs, hover over any of these charts to get a better idea of what we're looking at here and what it's telling us. We have national accounts, US treasuries and maturity spreads, corporate bonds and credit spreads, production and growth metrics, inflation-related metrics, employment-related metrics, housing and building, consumer confidence, and investor sentiment. So as you can see, we have a ton of different tabs here that contains a ton of different information, all of which is aimed at providing you with insights, with clues as to what's going on in the market and what's moving the market. It's going to help you identify the major themes at play and help you narrow your focus to the best corners of the market to find the best investment opportunities. So that brings us to the close of our tour today. As you can see, the market barometer is chock full of information. It is packed with clues that are gonna help you get a better idea of the current market environment, the most attractive corners of the market, and how to identify the best investment opportunities. The fact is that there's a ton of information out there. And a lot of it is really dense and tough to consume. So the market barometer is really designed to help the average investor digest all that information and put it together in a way that's going to lend to better investment decisions. So I encourage you guys to stick around for future tutorials and to utilize the market barometer to help you identify the best investment opportunities available to you today.